What is up, Knicks fans? Welcome back to yet another episode of Fireside Knicks. I'm your host, Dylan Backer, and last night, the New York Knicks absolutely crushed the Milwaukee Bucks at home, defeating them wire-to-wire -wire by a score of 116-94. to They did not trail at all in this game, and they led by as much as 30. Really just dominated a Bucks team that has really been struggling to start the year. They've been just absolutely free-falling. They're now 2-7 and seven on the year, and... The, their struggles have kind of, you know, sparked some trade rumors now. Whether or not the Bucks should blow it up, whether they should, you know, move on from some of their superstar pieces, most notably Giannis Antetokounmpo, which is the guy that we are going to really focus on in this episode. You know, last night against the Knicks, 24 points, 12 rebounds, 2 assists. He was a minus 17. OG Ananobi did a very good job at not letting him really kind of take over the game a little bit. And the Knicks just really cruised to this win. I mean, I, they were up double figures pretty much the entire game. Wire to wire victory, like I said, they were great offensively. They were great defensively. They just out handled. They just outmatched the Bucks. Simple as that. They outmatched them, and it is clear too that the tensions in the Milwaukee Bucks locker room is starting to grow. You know, Giannis seemed very frustrated last night about the loss, which reasonably so. I mean, they got crushed after you know a win that kind of looked like to be the one for them to turn things around. No, they went right back to being you know the the bad team that they have been so far this year and got absolutely demolished at Madison Square Garden. So Giannis was obviously very frustrated about it. You know, he was saying that they didn't compete. He was saying that they didn't look like they really wanted to win out there. And then, you know, there's that clip going around, that viral clip of him saying to somebody off to the side, like, if you don't want to be here, then leave. So clearly there is a lot going on in that locker room. And, you know, we're going to talk about really if the Knicks could kind of maybe push, make a push to get Giannis, which, you know, I, I want to give my own opinions on that because personally... I don't think the Knicks need to go get Giannis. I do think Giannis is obviously a fantastic player. He's going to be an MVP candidate pretty much every season that he is out there, you know, still playing like this. I mean, right now he's an even he's even an MVP candidate. Obviously, it's early in the season. You don't like to use that term this early, but, you know, he is still performing like one of the top players in the league. 30 points per game, 12 rebounds, 5 assists, doing the usual Giannis things, right? But that, besides the point here... I don't think the Knicks need to go get Giannis. And I know there's been a lot of rumors going around about, oh, you know, could the Knicks go get Giannis? I know the Knicks are very heavily favored in Giannis. Maybe they could go get him, form a big three, and end up winning a title. I don't think the Knicks need to do that, though, because, you know, they made the two trades in the offseason for Mikael Bridges and Carl Anthony Towns. Towns, of course, last night having another fantastic game, by the way, you know, with a nice 32-point outing, 11 rebounds, 5 assists. He's averaging nearly 30 points per game over his last five games. He's been better than advertised, in my opinion. So, very good performances so far from Towns this year. Bridges has also been pretty effective. You know, I think we still want to see a little bit more from Bridges, but given what the role he is in at the moment, I think we're seeing, you know, solid production from him. We're not seeing anything that's like really super alarming of course there was that whole jump shot drama before the season began but that seems to kind of be behind him now as he's been pretty efficient this year shooting the basketball so we don't need to really worry about that but back to Giannis here you know you made those two trades as I mentioned the Knicks did to get those two guys it depleted a lot of their depth and their depth used to be one of their strengths you know they used to have a very strong bench they used to be very deep you know they had like nine guys deep nine guys that were capable of starting now you don't really have that. You know, of course, there's some injuries right now for the Knicks as well that are that are really hampering their depth. You know, you don't have Mitchell Robinson to injury. You don't have Precious Achua right now also to injury. Cameron Payne has also missed the last three or four games. So you're missing a few pieces already as it is with the injuries. But even when they are healthy, I think everyone will agree that their bench looks significantly worse than it did at the start of last season. And you know what? When you have a starting five as good as these guys have been, it's okay. You can you can you can navigate through that. Of course, you want to be able to get good production from the bench, of course, because you know there have been some games this year where the bench has given them absolutely nothing. And when the bench gives them nothing, you're not really going to win games like that. You know, so you got to get some production from bench guys. But Deuce McBride has been very good this season so far. You know, he's he's been really locked in. I think he could be a, a strong candidate for the Sixth Man of the Year award, to be honest with you. But of course, it's way too early to really kind of point that out. So we'll just leave it at that. Tyler Kolek, though, he's gotten minutes lately with Cameron Payne being out, and he's been very productive in those minutes. So who knows? Maybe he ends up getting some playing time even when Payne returns. You know, you'll have a Chua back. And Achua, of course, brings you that size, that, you know, tenacity, and, of course, can guard multiple positions, so he's impactful, too. And then, of course, Mitchell Robinson, the offensive rebounding that we badly need, and, of course, the interior presence just overall, right? My point is, though, like, here, back to Giannis, you have a solid team still. You know, you have a, not even just a solid team, you have a very good team. You know, you have a fantastic team, you have a great starting five. Yes, it's a weaker bench, but you have a bench that's capable of, you know, giving you strong results when they're healthy. When they're at full strength, they can give you strong results, right? So, I don't think the Knicks need to necessarily go out there 
and trade for Giannis because it's only going to deplete them even more. Yes, if you were to say acquire Giannis, right, you form possibly the best big three in the entire NBA with Jalen Brunson, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Carl Anthony Towns, right? That's probably the best big three in the NBA, if not second best big three. Whatever you, wherever you place the Sixers big three and other big threes in the league, like the Suns big three and stuff, wherever you place those teams in their big threes, if you were to add Giannis to the Knicks, that's up to you to decide. But that's my point here is, Giannis is on a very expensive contract. This team is super expensive. The, Yan- the the Knicks, excuse me, are super expensive right now. You know, you traded away Randall, you traded away RJ, who were on pretty team-friendly deals for guys that now are on very expensive deals. You know, OG Ananobi is now on a very expensive deal. You sign him to a $212 million contract over the offseason. Carl Anthony Towns, of course, he's making nearly $60 million per season. You know, as far as whether or not that's an overpay or not, that's up to you to decide. I mean, I think he's been very good this season, so right now I'm not even thinking about his contract. But my point is, too, you have an expensive team here. I mean, Jalen Brunson had to take a pay cut for us to be able to even able to trade for Towns because you wouldn't have, they wouldn't have been able to do it if he didn't take that pay cut. The, money's just, the money would not have matched. It wouldn't have worked, right? So... You don't want to have to have guys doing that constantly. You know, these guys want to get paid. And, of course, Mikhail Bridges is also eventually due for an extension. So that's going to also kind of play a factor into this kind of stuff. But if you acquire Giannis, it probably means you have to sacrifice at least one of OG Ananobi and Mikhail Bridges, if not both of them. And, you know, a lot of bench players as well. And any draft capital you really have left. I mean, the Knicks traded away a lot of draft capital to go get Mikhail Bridges. They traded away five or six first-round picks in a pick swap. So... That's a lot of capital right there they gave up. And, of course, they traded away, I, I think, a second-round pick in the Towns deal. So you have you, you lost a lot of draft capital this summer. And we know the Knicks were very kind of conservative with holding on to those picks for quite a while. But now they've seemed to kind of stray away from that, and they made these all-in moves in, over the summer. They don't need to make another one right now, though. I think the Knicks have a good enough team right now to win the championship this year. I do. Even if they don't acquire Antetokounmpo, I think they have a team that can win the finals this year. You know, obviously... There's still a lot to be known about this team. You know, they're still trying to figure out chemistry with one another. They're trying to figure things out. But I think really a lot of the the, the, the noise around Giannis coming to the Knicks is based on early overreactions, I think. I think a lot of people are like, you know, questioning whether this Knicks team can coexist, whether these guys can play together over, what, eight games now into the season? That's a very small sample size. And quite frankly, in the four wins that they have, won, you know, in those four wins that they got, their average margin of victory is 21.4 points. That is a large margin, a huge margin, actually. You know, they've, they've won by, they, when they win, they win big. They blow these teams out. And when they lose, they lose close games. You know, they lose down stretches of games. Sometimes they just lose off of bad shooting, you know, bad clutch performances, just something, something small, right? Something that can easily be fixed. But when this team wins and they're clicking, they look unstoppable. I mean, we saw it last night against Milwaukee. They looked unstoppable. I mean, I don't think the Bucks really ever came close. You know, after the first quarter, it was pretty much over at that point because Towns was just absolutely obliterating the Bucks' defense, especially Brooke Lopez. He had 27 points in the first half. Yeah, you, Jalen Brunson had probably his worst shooting night of the season, and the Knicks still won this game by 22 points and led by 30 at one point. That should just tell you right there, how good this team is when they are performing at full strength, when they have all their pieces clicking, when they are playing well together. And right now, we we saw that last night. We've kind of seen it a few times already this season, and we've also seen times this season where they're kind of figuring things out. I still think they're trying to figure out how to, you know, play together in crunch time, in a clutch situation, you know, in a close game, because quite frankly, as I just mentioned, all of their wins pretty much have been blowouts except the Miami game, which that was a pretty close game, but they ended up winning that one by nine points. So, you know, you kind of comfortably won that one a little bit too. So, they haven't really had a game yet where they've won at like the final second or like won a game in the final minute or something like that. They haven't had that yet. You know, they had a couple opportunities to do that on the road trip, but of course they fell short of doing that. So it takes time to learn with that kind of stuff. But when they do get that stuff going, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. You know, I've been saying that time and time again, even though they're four and four this season, even though I have my own concerns about this team, especially their depth and their bench and all that stuff, this team is very good. Very good. This team can win a, win a championship this season. They can. And I do I think they will? I'm not going to sit here and say 100% they will because that's just way too early for me to predict that. But when they're at full strength, we know what they're capable of. We're seeing it left and right. They don't have to go get Giannis to really push the needle. I understand you, know, you want to make that all-in move or whatever to win a finals. I don't think we're at the stage, though, where it's finals or bust for them. 
you know, they have a three to four year window to kind of win with this core. And I do think this core is capable of winning a championship. You know, I thought that they were capable of winning a championship even when Randall was still around and OG and Anobi came along. But now that you added Towns and Bridges in the offseason, you have a loaded team. You do. You don't have to go trade, you know, half your team once again to go get Giannis. And I understand if there are fans out there that want Giannis and, and to kind of form that big three. But if you do that, you are just completely erasing all the depth you have. And you got to have some depth. You know, we know Tom Thibodeau likes to play his starters a lot of minutes. So I know for some that may mean nothing, but these guys will get tired at some point. I mean, we've, we're seeing guys already play close to 40 minutes per game. And we're only eight games into the season. We're, we're in early November and guys are already playing 40 minutes because of the lack of depth we have. You don't want that for a full season. You know, you don't you don't want that for many seasons because it's going to come back to haunt you. I mean, Giannis missed the playoffs last year with an injury. And, of course, the Knicks dealt with an unprecedented amount of injuries in the playoffs last year. So it, 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 you really want to have pieces around, all around so that you can kind of brace for this kind of stuff. Because if you trade away, you know, all your depth for one guy... That comes with a huge risk. I think making any sort of blockbuster trade like that comes with a huge risk. You know, making the Towns trade was a big risk. Making the Bridges trade even was a big risk, even though they didn't really give up anybody that that significant. But regardless, I do think while Giannis is a fantastic player and can and obviously would make the Knicks a title contender without a doubt, they don't need to do it. They don't. They don't have to do it. And, and I get it. There's a good chance that Giannis could end up getting moved if the Bucks continue to struggle. And that will, of course, alter the kind of course that the league is on at the moment. But... I don't think the Knicks necessarily have to do it. Like, there are teams out there that have to do it. You know, there are teams that probably, you can sit there and go, yeah, they have to go get Giannis or else they're gonna, they're not going to go anywhere. You know, you, you look at teams like maybe Miami or some teams out west that probably could use him and end up being really good. You know, so I understand that you don't want to let, like, your rival teams go get him, but you also don't want to screw yourselves either. You don't. And if the Knicks do that, I think they can end up screwing themselves a little bit just because of you know, the window that they have right now and all that stuff, I just feel like it would be too complicated of a deal for them to make, you know, with Giannis's contract, as I mentioned too, he's on a five-year, $228 million deal, and then he's on a three-year, $175 million extension that kicks in next season, so that's a very expensive player, obviously, it's rightfully so, he's an MVP candidate left and right, so, you know, it makes perfect sense, but that, but besides the point, I don't think the Knicks need to do it, I don't think they have to, Giannis is clearly frustrated in Milwaukee. Stuff might change very soon. Who knows? Maybe he gets dealt before before the new year even happens. Maybe he doesn't get dealt at all. Maybe he stays in Milwaukee. Maybe the Bucks turn it around. Maybe they fire Doc Rivers and they end up turning things around instead of moving on from their players. We'll see what happens with that. But I don't think that. But bottom line, I don't think the Knicks are necessarily in a position where they have to make a move like this. They don't. I don't think so. So that's really all I got to say about that. I didn't really have much else to say. You know, with regards to the game against Milwaukee, I think they just played phenomenal. They dominated him on both ends of the floor. You know, like I said, led wire to wire. They never trailed once in this game, actually, and they led by 30 late in the fourth quarter. So they just pummeled these guys. They pummeled them. It was a statement victory. They needed that after a tough road trip, and I'm really happy to see that, and I'm just hoping that they continue that trend when they head over to Indiana tomorrow night. So guys, I don't have much else to say, so we really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the whole Giannis situation in the comments section below because I would love to hear about it and talk with you guys about it. You can follow our social media platforms. We're on t TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and of course this YouTube page that you are watching the video on. You can follow my personal Twitter account. It's right there on the screen. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Fireside Knicks. Peace out.